Hey, how are we all doing? Now that Pixelmator Photo has moved to a subscriber-based plan, let's have a look how it matches up against Lightroom Mobile and their prices. As we all know, Pixelmator Photo has now gone to a subscription-based model. And let's have a look at the prices of that that you can see on the screen in comparison to Lightroom and why I think that at the moment, Pixelmator Photo is really not worth the money. So look at the price, all in dollars, but you can you can convert that to pounds if you go to your relevant app store. Um, the yearly subscription, $23.99, monthly subscription, $4.99, and lifetime subscription, $54.99, which is great value. Um, and if I was gonna choose one, I think that's what I'd choose. Because the developers have said that they will um, support people that have already purchased that lifetime plan. When we look at the prices in comparison to the Lightroom Mobile, you see a um, premium monthly is 4 dollars with 100 gig of cloud storage. Now, how that differs to um, Pixelmator Photo, why you don't need anything for cloud storage on Pixelmator Photo, is because it uses your Apple cloud storage. So you could take that into consideration and say, look, I do or I don't pay for my Apple-based cloud storage, which Pixelmator Photo is taking um, taking use of. So I don't really need to go through them all. You can see all the prices there on the screen and how they based up against the three options that Pixelmator Photo has. But that's not really the point. The prices are roughly the same. Let's talk about the features that you do and don't get and why I, and why I don't think Pixelmator Photo is there just yet. So if I go over to this image, so the image was supplied by Joey Banks and you can find Joey Banks on Unsplash. So um, so thanks a lot for that. Awesome image, thank you very much. So a few things that we could potentially do with this image and I want to show you the limitations right away with Pixelmator Photo. So let me pinch and zoom in here. Now this is where Pixelmator Photo absolutely wins is that we select the healing brush at the top and I can pretty much um, select all of this background that I don't want and apart from the bottom piece it's done quite a good job I could be really critical and tidy that up a little bit more and let's go to this side now I'm purposely being really um, really quick here just to show you the power that Pixelmator Photo does have. Now what I want to do is I want to enhance the sky by using a mask. And that's where Pixelmator Photo completely falls down. There is no mask options. I can go to my settings and I could maybe select a certain colour. And I, of course I could adjust... Yeah, I could do just lots of things on this. I could make the image. I can enhance the image and do sharpen the image increase the exposure but if I want to create a mask even just a radial mask to enhance the subject I can't do that there's no way of doing that and that's where Pixelmator Photo for mobile absolutely falls down compared to Lightroom for mobile. Let's go over to Lightroom for mobile and let me show you the strengths and weaknesses compared just two tools that I've just spoke about. So now if we go over to the healing brush here and I'm just going to change this down from clone over to heal and zoom in. What I actually have to do with Lightroom because it's not a content aware machine learning removal tool. I have to be a little bit more um, careful with how I do it because it'll select somewhere local to it and it'll copy the details from somewhere local to where I'm removing. But nevertheless, we can get it done. It is just a little bit slower. And sometimes it doesn't, doesn't quite get the detail that you would get or the, the speed that you would be able to do this in Pixelmator. You might have to do a few a few go-overs. So now we could, I suppose, give that another, another run over. Just to tidy that selection up a little bit. And you see he's done quite a good job. So while that heel brush is good, it's nowhere near as good as the content aware sort of AI function within Pixelmator Photo. Now, where this shines, masks. Let me select a mask, click plus, select the sky. It will do its thing. And I now can edit the sky. And just let's say, for instance, if I just wanted to reduce 
the exposure of the sky just to have this dark moody sky you see i've moved the exposure of the sky down just a few stops and this is the result that i get if i increase the contrast reduce the highlights reduce the shadows reduce the whites and reduce the blacks i get this real moody dark sky so now in lightroom really quickly with a couple of moves of a slider i've gone from this to this in pixelmator photo i could apply a sharpen preset i've gone from this to this you can look at some of my videos i've been a massive supporter from the very first day that pixelmator was um, released and i've got loads of tutorial videos on pixelmator but for me, I think the subscription model is the way to go, but I think they need to add a few more tools and I'm sure they will as they go along. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Catch you later.